So at first, when I started letting my children hold praying mantises, my husband was wondering if that was even safe. And I realized and learned, or I'd known in the past, but I realized again, that in Spanish, the name for praying mantises is literally translated the devil's mule. They also have an, they're also sometimes called the religious mantis. But the devil's mule sure sounds like it's not a safe creature. <laughs> While praying mantis sounds very good. But yes, praying mantises are totally safe to play with. I want to share how you can watch their life cycle with your children today in this video. My name is Melinda. I am a happy wife and mom of four. Thank you for joining me today as I share the things that I have learned with other busy young moms like myself. So for a long time my children and I have been watching creatures and insects and bugs and caterpillars and butterflies and they all love them, my girls, and I'm sure someday my boy when he's older like to walk around with caterpillars and so on, much to the, uh, what do you call it? Well, anyways, their grandmothers and aunts and so on are not sure what to think about it. But I just like it because I know they're learning from real life. And we've learned about the ladybug life cycle. We've watched many butterflies go from caterpillars to chrysalises to hatching butterflies. And then we let them go. And I have another video about that. But the praying mantis was something I just never really paid attention to. Now, one day, one of the girls was climbing a tree we have in our backyard here. And she found what she thought was a cocoon. And she was very eager for it. She wanted her dad to get it for her. Well, I didn't have time, so she waited, and then she showed it to him. And he brought it in. I broke off a little branch where it was on. And since we weren't familiar with what kind, it looked like some, we figured, well, some kind of butterfly, or who knows what will hatch from it eventually. It looked kind of like some kind of cocoon or chrysalis. But not one that we were familiar with. So we brought it in. And we had it for several weeks in our little terrarium. And then we, one day I was there sitting at the table doing something. I saw a little praying, tiny praying mantis, like, you know, one centimeter long on the wall or one and a half centimeters. And I didn't really think anything about it. But then all of a sudden my daughter saw that the container was filled with little praying mantises. And here's some pictures of them. Aren't they cute? So anyway... It turns out that that case, that it was a praying mantis egg case that she had found. And so we learned something new. And it was very interesting for us. We then let them go because they are the, well, we played with them a while. They're so fun to have them run around on my fingers. And we let them go. Now, sometimes people wonder if they're venomous or if they bite or something. Praying mantises are not poisonous. They're really good for your garden. They're totally safe, except I've read that some of them, if they feel threatened, they may bite. But it's not like a bad bite or something. And the girls and I like to hold them as long as they're the small ones, you know. Those big ones, well, that's a different story. I don't like the looks of their scratchy claws. And even if I know they don't harm or poison you or something, but I wouldn't want them to scratch me up or bite me for some reason. So, yeah. They're not poisonous, they're good for your, your garden, they eat a lot of bugs. And we let them go back in our backyard and hopefully they'll help us out. <laughs> you can do that too if you find praying mantises. Maybe you don't have the opportunity to observe them. The little nymphs that then grow into bigger creatures, we didn't keep them because it could be a bit complicated. But I've looked online and below in the description I have my article where I wrote about this linked and in there you'll find links to finding terrariums to places where you can buy egg cases or nymphs in some of it just in season because there's certain seasons for them and I don't know like I don't know if they'd ship them here to Costa Rica to us but depending where you are you might want to do that with your children uh, you could check it out if nothing else you could find them and observe them observe creatures with your children that's what I like to encourage people to do always. We have learned so much. We have... More recently, the, my, my husband was digging a post, a hole, 
And he found in the ground, he found five little white eggs like that. We knew they were probably some kind of snake or lizard eggs, but we kept them in, in a container, in a jar, closed up because I wasn't going to have a bunch of snakes getting loose in my house. And we kept them for several weeks. Finally, one day I was tired of having that jar sitting around on my bookshelf. And so I said, well, let's pitch them and see. And when my husband opened the jar, he saw there was one of lizard of these. And so he went with the girls and he went down to the garden and he dumped them out and four of them had already hatched. And there was one egg unhatched, but as they were putting it in the dirt to cover it, to let it hatch in its own time, they saw that the earth got wet around it. So it must have opened and liquid come out or something. So they dug it out and they could watch it come out of the egg case. Now these lizards, they're not totally harmless. They look a bit snaky and slinky and... And it's not my favorite kind, but I don't think they do any harm. They probably do good. So we have them running around. <laughs> well, we never have seen them again. But somewhere they exist, probably, if they haven't been eaten. And so many other interesting things that you can do with creatures. So why don't you go find a praying mantis? Watch them eat some other bug. Uh, I wish I had thought to take videos of them because they were so cute, so tiny, running around. And since then, we sometimes find them here and there, and the girls really like to watch them. You know, if you watch them up close, you can see they have these big eyes, especially once they're a bit bigger, and they turn their head in the most interesting way. They look almost intelligent. Probably there are some people who have them as pets and have trained them to do something. It seems to me I've heard that, but I don't know. Anyway, that's my encouragement for you. Teach your children about real-life science, and you'll see that. It'll be a lot of fun and they'll learn a lot and you will too.